Hi there, my name's Rob Glenister. I am an audio designer based in the UK and I specialise in composing music for video games and creating sound effects. I'm currently an audio designer at NetSpeak Games, so I've been doing that for about a year. Um, before then, I've been doing freelance work for about five years on and off, starting with the smaller projects and then moving on to bigger projects, and then finally placing myself in a position uh, where I could quit my job and do this full time. And uh, it is an absolute joy to do this kind of work. It's what I love doing. It's what I think about all the time. And I'm happy to share a few thoughts about what I do and what I think about certain things. Music's always been an extremely important part of my life. Um, it started when I was really young, when I was about 10 years old. I was lucky enough to join a brass band and I played the tuba. And obviously that's quite a big instrument. I was only a small boy. And in fact, I was so small, I had to sit on two uh, telephone directories to even reach the mouthpiece. So um, that was a little obstacle we had to overcome. But stuck with it right up i stayed with that same brass band until i was about 21 so that's a long time to be regularly listening and performing lots of different styles of music and the cool thing about playing tuba is that you're pretty much always playing the root notes and you can really listen to the relationship between that root note and everything that was going on over the top of it so all the all the melodies all the counter melodies the chords the the rhythms that are happening, um, all the support notes and everything like that. And I had that every week listening to that. I think that kind of subconsciously I had a lot of detailed music theory just enter my head. So even though I'm not um, classically trained or anything, um, I, I don't have any degrees or anything in actual music uh, design or anything like that. I feel like I've got a good grasp of music theory or at the very least, the bits of music theory that appeal to me and, and make my work easier. Um, so really had that a lot of my life. Outside of the brass band, um, when I was a young teenager, I kind of started being into girls and I thought a tuba isn't as cool as an electric guitar. So I learned, um, learned how to play bass and I joined bands. And then right up until I was about 30 years old, I've always been kind of in bands and questing to get my band to Wembley or get always get to the next step, get on the radio, get to the festivals. And I've been all around the UK and uh, places in the world with my music. It's been very, very exciting. Um, but it wasn't making a lot of money. So um, there was a point when I really thought something's got to give and I need to start making my music make me money. And that was when I kind of put my love of video games uh, with my love of creating music and kind of a bit cross and think of it earlier because it's been a really good fit. Um, but yeah, pretty much my whole life music has been a really, really important part of it. And the next question talks about success, like what is success fundamentally, how to be successful, that kind of thing, and also how to be happy. And I think they're kind of one of the same. Um, I think success is so subjective and it can be measured in so many different ways. So one way to measure success is, uh, are you getting loads of money for something? And um, while it is amazing to receive uh, a nice bit of cash for when you've done something, um, that might not necessarily reveal your actual success. Are you improving? Are you getting better? Are you getting happier? And um, I don't think money has much to do with those things. Um, it's a nice, maybe a nice little scorecard. I always like to say, I always sort of ch challenge myself. Um, if I'm doing freelance work, always try and earn a little bit more with your next job. And then that means you're kind of getting a bit more successful. That's one way to do it. Um, but I think the real metric is, are you improving? Are you getting better as a creator? And that's easy to do. If you've never done any music production or anything like that before, you just starting the very first project is a massive uh, improvement. That is a huge success compared to what you were doing before that moment, which was nothing at all. Um, then the very next track, you'll find it's probably better. The next track might be better. You might try some things out and they're not very successful, but then you, you're a little bit closer to making them successful. 
Um, so I think success is all about just learning and growing in your skills and not being it's like I used to be like oh I don't know how to do this thing so I'll never be able to do that that's too hard I have no idea how to do this but now I kind of get excited about it it's like oh that's something I don't know how to do it's something I could potentially learn how to do and invariably you can look up anything like you can literally you can pretty much find anything on the internet it's there's there's almost no excuse um an easier way is to get a kind of mentor or someone that can actually teach you. Um, but even if you have absolutely, if you just don't have access to that, those kinds of resources, maybe you can't go to university or uh, you don't have, you don't have someone who can sit down and be your mentor. Uh, you can always look it up on the internet. So I think success really is, um, it's, it's really a measurement of how much you're improving. And if you're always improving and you're consistent, then then maybe you'll discover a bit of luck and then that's what leads to kind of maybe monetary success, you know. Um, but it's just like working hard and investing your time into your crafts. I think that's, that's what success is in this game anyway. So the next question here uh, talks of uh, what are the elements to make a good song and how does context play a role in making a track appealing to an audience? Um, Context is huge, and I think like intent uh, is really important as well. I think it's really um, important to know why you are doing something, what are you trying to achieve with the thing that you're setting out to do. When I was in bands, uh, the kind of mission statement for the song was sound as cool and as sexy as possible, or make people dance, or um support these emotional lyrics as best as you can and that was really kind of what it was all about um if we were looking to sell our music which um if we were we probably would have sold more <laughs> but we didn't uh, but if we were really looking to sell our music then the question might be what do our audience want to hear what do our audience want to listen to because then they'd be more likely uh to buy it so in those instances uh, the elements to making a good song would be to tick those boxes. We are making uh, more music that sounds like what our audience wants to hear. So that's what would make a good song. In my line of work, I am responding to what a client wants. And it's it's a lovely industry because we're moving on to, we, we go from one thematic study to another. So a lot of the music I make, I would never choose to make myself. It's all based on the brief that I'm given. So if I'm making, if I'm given the brief, can you make uh, music to uh, a puzzle game set in a hospital and make sure you channel uh, 90s medical dramas that you saw on the TV? That's going to set me off on a, an amazing path. But as long as I hit those notes, it's got to be a puzzle game. So it's got to be... Uh, thoughtful and relaxing it can't be too present with a big wild melody because it's got to support the action um it's a puzzle game as well so it's not going to be really action-packed and it's not going to be explosive so a lot of it needs to be subtle and interesting but then it's also got a channel 90s medical dramas so lots of kind of like doing 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 all that kind of uh percussive nonsense that goes with a 90s medical drama and then also it's got to put a smile on the client's face they might not like the first draft but they might like the second draft so um what the elements to a good song uh really do depend on what you're trying to achieve as a very basic thing i do have a system which i like to kind of stick to and it's what makes a song a good song according to my subjective taste based on everything i've done in my life up until this point everything i've ever listened to and the stuff i enjoy listening to so that is going to be different for everyone else like my take on it won't be the same as anyone else's um but for me like one of the things i really am uh keen on is i love uh chord progressions to resolve in a really satisfying way um i try and make things simple as well so i mean invariably i'll have a lot of tracks on you know i'll have anything 20 to 50 tracks on uh, an individual project when i'm making a song 
but I like to think if it doesn't work on four tracks, so we're talking a bass, a melody, a chord, and some percussion, if it doesn't work on just those four tracks, then if you add another 20 tracks, 50 tracks to it, it's still not going to inherently work or it's not going to hit the pleasing notes. That's not always the case. Sometimes you've got to do um, some real like ambient stuff, which requires lots and lots of subtle tracks with no melody at all. Or it might be like a horror game and it's got to be, you don't want it to resolve nicely at all. You want it to be, you know, awful sounding or terrifying. Uh, but for me, I like to keep it as simple as possible. And then there's other things as well. It's like if you've got, um, I always, I, the thing I like in a song is when you get a melody um, and then a counter melody that could replace the melody, but then also you can have the melody and the counter melody work at both the same time. And that, that also gives you kind of Lego bricks to extend a track or change the style of it. Um, it's done really well in Banjo Kazooie. If you listen to that, you go into this always two variants of the song that you can flick between when you go amongst the different areas of the game. So I like that kind of modular simplicity as well. And I just like really, I like really joyful music as well. It's anything that's kind of um, steeped in the nostalgia of retro games and, you know, things on the Super Nintendo, for example, and, and like Final Fantasy VII, just wonderful, wonderful music. But it's often really, really simple and the idea is really clear. So, you know, if you if you delete an element from your song and nothing changes, delete it. You don't need it. You know, I think like only adds if it needs it. But if you take it away and you don't notice it, then, you know, just get rid of it as well. So many, many elements, but it's all subjective. There's always just someone's opinion at the end of the day. I've always loved video game music and I've always considered it my favorite music to listen to, even as a child. I wasn't like the coolest dude at school or anything. So, and I've got a twin brother as well. So uh, me and my twin just hung out together. We didn't need to hang out with other kids. So I wasn't into like what was on the pop charts and uh, what was on the radio or anything. I just loved playing my Nintendo games and listening to the music. So it's always been really, really important to me. Um, obviously I got older, ended up in loads of bands and trying to be cool and make exciting music that people wanted to dance to and get it on the radio and stuff. But as a step away from that kind of stuff in, in, in this part of my life, I am really, really just enjoy listening to, um, video game music because I find it's emotive and I like that it's trying to tell a story and I like trying to... I mean, when they smash it, it's it's just like you're so, you know exactly where you are when you close your eyes and listen to the music. And I just think a video game is an imaginative world and music gets you there quicker. Um, so, you know, you do get some crossover. You know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of artists that sample video game music when they're making pop or, you know, rap hooks or whatever, or beats or whatever. Um, but I just think that, I prefer video game music over band music now, even. I still, I still, there's loads of bands I love. I love going and seeing um, bands live and, and getting blown away by the experience and the energy and just the sheer noise of it all. But um, I think that with uh, game music, it just hits better. And I think about it all the time. I love how, like, it's, it's kind of quite a closed community as well. It's like I can't go to a house party and just start playing video game music and then, uh, and then have anything happen other than someone tell me to stop playing music at this party, you're ruining the party, you know? Um, but maybe I just, I'm going to the wrong parties probably. Who knows? I think, I think I, I'd go to a club night where it was just like, it was just video game music. I would, I, that would be like my dream, like streets of rage and uh, like Yoshi's Island and Halo. And oh, I'd just be amazing. And just not even like, kind of cool modern like club versions of them just the actual rips from the games I, I think that'd be a good club night so next question asks um how does one's equipment play um in the quality of the music um it is important but it's not as important as knowing exactly what you want to do and expressing it as best as you can um the truth is, like, if you're going to do uh, music production and consider it as like a career, you are going to need a good computer at the very least, and you're going to need um, you're going to need a digital audio workspace. Um, 
and you've got to find the one that you like to use and some of them are cheaper than others and then you've got to find the plugins that you like to use and again some are cheaper than others um but saying that there's lots of amazing um free resources available to you new grounds in particular if you go to the audio portal right pins at the top it's just everything that you need to start making music um there's fl studio which i don't think it's either really cheap or it doesn't cost anything at all there's so many free plugins which just work out of the box and they're great and then if you go in the audio portal on new grounds just ask anyone like they will always give you our opinion and help as best as we can so um really like when you start investing in your equipment that i i find the stuff that i invest in uh, it's always stuff that makes me work quicker or uh gets me to uh a level which is comparable uh with kind of other professionals um i also buy instruments i like buying instruments and they're expensive as well but really you can you can get a pretty good midi controller for about 100 quid um you can get free like audio workspace there's a free version of ableton that's available which is really good um so you really you really don't have to spend a lot uh to make the quality of the music go up it's like you will notice if you get like the free orchestras and then you spend I don't know, like 600 quid on the BBC symph Symphonic Orchestra plugin, which has actual recordings from the Sym BBC Symphonic Orchestra. Obviously, there's going to be a difference between then. But if you know a few tricks, a little few, you know, like you can double track certain tracks, you can create kind of natural ways of uh, changing the files and the, the notes that you put in to simulate sort of realism. You could, There's so many shortcuts um, I think the biggest the biggest thing that you can do, the biggest thing that will improve the quality of your music is practicing writing music and doing it over and over and over again. That's what will improve the quality of your music. And also break down the music that you love listening to and what is every single thing doing in that piece? What is the kick drum doing? Uh, what is the shaker doing? Uh, what is... Uh, each hi-hat doing and that's just the drums like what are the chords doing uh, what effect is on them what is the melody doing and what are the production techniques that you can hear that you can notice and then try and recreate them that's what will improve the quality of your music more than anything so equipment if you've got the money fantastic invest but it's better to invest in time <laughs> invest in giving yourself more time to do it the next question is, um, who gets to decide what good music is? Uh, the answer is you. You decide what good music is. Um, I won't have anyone tell me that the stuff I like and the stuff that I love isn't amazing. Uh, th th there's people say, how can you like that band? I'll say, I love this band. And someone's like, oh, you're, you're crazy. They're awful. And I, I love them anyway. It's like, what is good? Good is a subjective opinion. G like, good music... The moment music becomes good music is the moment it enters your ears and your brain computes it and then you re you release hormones uh, that reflect the mood that it puts you in or the feeling that it makes you feel and you decide what good music is. No one else decides it at all. Um, that's very different to um, creating music that is correct for someone. So you might make music that you think is amazing, but if the client is asking for music which is totally different from what you think is good music, then uh, you've done incorrect music for the client. So it doesn't matter if it's good, it's wrong. So uh, I think it's interesting to know what's good music is different from what's correct music. So just be mindful of that. So there's a question here um, about uh, what it means to make correct decisions in life and how does routine play a part in this and the importance of time management and then also building a physical and mental environment uh, that is positive all of this is really really important i feel like um one success in life is very much down to the quality of the decisions that you make it could be anything from, am I getting enough sleep? 
Uh, no. Um, is it because I've got all my devices turned on and I just leave them on and I watch Netflix until three in the morning? Um, that's a bad decision. Uh, turning off your computer, putting your phone in another room and then getting some sleep. That's a good decision. So... Um, that is a decision that you can make every day. You know, getting up, making your bed, that's a decision that you can make. Leaving it unmade and feeling like, oh, yeah, you know, it's going to be one of those kind of lazy days. That's a bad decision. Um, it all all adds up. Um, routine does help, but also it's important to give yourself a break. Um, invariably, if you want to build a career in either game creation or uh, creating music, you know, you've got to build a huge portfolio. You've got to network a ton. Um, you need to do a lot of work. You need to manage all your social media. You need to, sometimes you need to have regular content being created. And it's just a huge staggering amount of work. And often you've got to work a, a full-time job whilst you're doing all of this as well. Um, so if you, if you think you're going to, do it all with like no breaks you're 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 mad and you will damage your mental health and you'll damage your actual health so find like i think like creating routine is you can always do something towards your career but it doesn't have to be a big thing there's there's some things which are big like you write and compose a whole song that's a that's a great big thing that you can do or it might be right one tweet uh, which reflects an opinion on something within uh, game audio um, or follow someone or comment on someone that is in um, the games industry. Um, that'd be fantastic. That's a, that's a little tiny thing that you can do. But if you're tired and you're exhausted, make sure that's the only thing that you do and then make sure that you have an app, uh, make sure that you have a nice breakfast or a nice meal and you drink lots of water every day. Um there's also things as well like time management. Uh, time management is important because um, it's all well and good promising a client, oh, yeah, I can do it in this amount of time. Uh, but real time management is how long does this take and what is my time worth? And if you start promising like loads and loads of work and not charging enough for your time, you'll find that your time management just explodes and catches on fire and then you you just can't work effectively so it's better to promise like a smaller amount of work that's of a higher quality and then you get happily paid for it uh when they are so proud of so happy of what you've given them so yeah just and also just make sure that your time management is focused on things that are really going to benefit you um like newgrounds is like a wonderful place to share and create and collab and do all these kinds of things um but don't forget that you know there's uh you got to make you got to pay the bills as well um you know there's some there were there were some like frighteningly prolific people on newgrounds and i look at them and i i, I don't think right if i want to produce that amount of high quality music um i need to do this this and this and this and then i'll put it all out it's like that is not what you should do that's not good time management time good time management is like what do i need to do what do i want to do what's going to be beneficial to me to do it and then kind of fit it around that time and make sure you leave time for breaks, make sure you leave time uh, for um, holidays. And then also as well, like know that sometimes you feel a bit, um, what's the word? I can't even think of it. It's like you, you run out of ideas. A writer's block, you get like writer's block. And sometimes you like you approach something so many ways and then it's just best to like, give it a break. Stop listening to it. Like, give yourself a few hours off it. Go for a walk. Like, number of times I've gone for a walk and then I've had to get my phone out because I've immediately thought of the idea just on a nice calming walk. So I think that's good for just in general, like when you're looking after your mental health and uh, looking after yourself, go for walks, drink lots and lots of water, eat as many vegetables as you can. You know, I think water's the most important there. Don't go without food. Don't, don't just get a pizza every day. Um, do Just make the best choices that you can. And the more good choices that you make, uh, the more successful and happier that you will be. In general, not all the time, but it certainly helps. 
So there's a question here that says, uh, what do you think has formed my personality? And I think it's it's all kinds of things. Um, I think being in bands uh, means I'm generally kind of, uh, I'm a bit of a thrill seeker, I would say. Um, I like putting myself out there and um, kind of being vulnerable. And then like when you get like, it's very, really, really nerve wracking. I remember like the first time I ever went on stage to perform in a band. I was meant to play bass and do backing vocals and I couldn't even move. I was frozen to the spot, just playing the notes. And then I went to do the backing vocals and nothing came out. It was like so, I was so consumed with fear. But the more you put yourself out there and do these kinds of things that make you scared, the easier they become. And um I think that leads to all kinds of things. Uh, when you when you kind of chase that kind of rush, I think you kind of, I don't know if this is the case for everyone, but I think like it means I'm drawn towards silly or surprising things. Um, anything that's kind of gives it like immediate delight and anything that makes me laugh. And um, I don't think I really got any of that from school necessarily. When I was at school, I went to an all boys school and I hung out with just the same few people uh, a bit of an in-betweener, I guess. And that was it. It, was, it wasn't It was really, like, it was very, I don't know. I, 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 it's, it's a really hard one, like, personality, like, where it comes from. I think, I think I've, got, I've got a kind and supportive mum. I've got a twin brother who I've always got a friend in, so I can always talk about. I don't have any worries. I don't, there's not, I don't ever have to really hide anything because I can always go to my brother and that kind of unloads me from kind of a lot of worry I might have. So I don't have the weight of anything that's worrying me when I present myself, when I go out and when I'm networking. I also love, I love comedy and um, things that make me laugh. Uh, it's over lockdown. I started doing improv, improvised comedy, uh, which was, it was just something to do during lockdown. I was going a bit mad, but I've, I've actually been doing it about three years now and, um I've picked up a lot of that as well it, it just really appeals to me there's there's a phrase in improv where you say wrong and strong um so it doesn't matter if, you, if you're gonna mess it up just give it a go and 99 times out of 100 nothing bad happens right um and it's yeah I think I've just got sort of generally quite a joyful person I think it comes from my family and uh thrill seeking predominantly perhaps but who knows could come from anywhere, really. My favourite game of all time is Super Metroid on the Super Nintendo. Uh, it was released in 1994, and in my mind, it's one of the perfect games. Um, it's also given me a love of Metroidvania games, so uh, games like Hollow Knight and, and the like, I really enjoy as well. But Super Metroid, I just thought, was just such a classy incredible achievement especially for the super nintendo as well um it had so much atmosphere if you really felt like you were alone with samus uh, you had to get her there to the end on her own it felt isolated it felt creepy um it felt huge it felt like the planet the zebes was a character in its own right which i just think is a staggering achievement and then, you know, it's just like loads of secrets in it. It controls really well. It's really imaginative. It's just, it's just hits everything. But I, I especially love the sound design. I think in Metroid games, it, right across the board, right up to the Prime series and beyond. Um, I've loved the Metroid music. It's just so advanced and alien, but like kind of heroic and triumphant, but also really scary in places as well. And um it's just, it's just a, such a spectacular achievement. And there's an artist called uh, Glasses, or Glasses, and uh, he does some amazing uh, covers of this sort of music as well. But it just, it just, I just love it so much. I could, I could play Super Metroid anytime, um, any place, if I could. There's a question here that says, "What games do I dislike?" And truth is, I don't spend a lot of time with games I don't like I just haven't got the time to spend playing them um I, I'm not really that into 
battle royale games like like your Fortnites and Call of Duty and stuff. And it's probably because I'm not very good at them, to be honest. I hate going online and just getting my ass handed to me when I play a game like this. It was the same with StarCraft and Command and Conquer. It's the same with Fortnite and Apex Legends now. Um, it's not to say I don't like all battle royale games i really enjoy tetris 99 because i'm quite good at tetris so I, I get a few wins on that that's good fun um but invariably i just like a solo kind of game like video game time is me time and as you know while it's nice being a part of a team um i i do just like getting on and doing it on my own and it's escapism for me so i think anything like where there's a strong multiplayer element um, it's probably not the game for me. And it's not to say, you know, obviously they're wildly popular and everyone loves playing them, but, you know, I know what I like and uh, it's not people. It's, it's, it's just me on my own, playing my Kirby or whatever, and then that'll do me. Thank you very much. There's a question here that says, uh, what would I do if I lost all uh, my equipment? Uh, what would I do if I had to start all over again? So um, this scares the shit out of me, really. I like it really does. I've got everything insured. I've got everything backed up onto clouds. Um, so if I, you know, if I did lose everything, it's not a problem. I've I would be able to get my uh, masters and stuff. Um, but um, I wouldn't be able to get my instruments back. I've got a real like my guitars. I've got a real bond with my guitars. Um, guitar players will tell you that there's there's no guitar like your guitar and. Uh, it is a shame and I, I'd missed like the way my, my studio works and like what, what the way everything works, but it would give me an opportunity to buy a new computer, buy new equipment and maybe design a better studio that I can work better in. So could be an opportunity as well. Um, so yeah, I would not panic, but I would also be distraught, but I have got insurance. That's what it's there for. I'm at a point in my life now where I can look back on a nice body of work and a lot of experiences within the games industry. And I'm really, really proud of myself, how far I've come and um, how much I've improved as an artist. And I'm nowhere near the finished article yet. I would say I'm about 5% of the way to where I want to be. Um, but the games industry is an amazing place. Uh, there's lots of uh, opportunities to be had, uh, to be creative, and there's lots of amazing people to meet as well. Um, I've loved every moment of my life since I decided to start doing this. I've, I've woken up every day excited um, at the possibilities of what could be created or uh, what could I compose next or who could I meet or what game could I work on? And um, it's an, it's, it's great kind of working within unknowns, you know, I don't know where the next page is going to come from, or um, I don't know where the next adventure is going to be. And setting out a path like this is, it's really challenging. Uh, it's very stressful, but it's also hugely satisfying and no matter where no matter where you get um in your journey uh, no one can take away anything that you've created and composed like whatever people upload to Newgrounds for example um as long as Newgrounds are still running um that'll be there forever uh, even if it's just on your hard drive and you don't share it with anyone you've created it it exists that is an amazing thing that is like so freaking cool that this is something us stupid humans can do is make art to make other people happy and I, I just think like the the video like the medium of video games is just awesome because it it combines all of the mediums it combines these be these like beautiful works from artists and um animators and audio designers and like programmers and it's just amazing to watch uh watch it all come together and have even even more amazing pieces of art uh, created. So it's, uh, if, you, if you're kind of like starting out as an audio designer or thinking about it, um, just go for it. Just do it. It's it's like the, it's, the sooner you do it, the easier it gets. Every single time you do a thing, you'll be get better at doing a thing. You can listen back to it. You can improve it. You can share it with someone. Uh, see what they think, implement their feedback. 
Um, also, don't worry too much about what other people think. I know it's like there's a bit, uh, you know, I mean, I, I love Newgrounds and I love that everyone can leave their reviews and stuff. But, you know, it's the most important thing is, are you happy with it? And are you proud of it? And does it put a smile on your face? Because if it puts a smile on your face, there's a really good chance it's going to put a smile on at least one other person's face, right? Um, so just make it, make sure you're happy with it. And then like, if it gets to a point where you're making music for clients, just get a really clear understanding of what they are looking for. And remember they've come to you or they've let you work on them because they like you and what you put out there. It's got nothing to do with anyone else. They, that client likes you and your opinion on what music is. So don't try and sound like anyone else and, you know, just trust your gut. Um, you know, take constructive criticism and feedback and implement it if you if you think it will be helpful. Um, you know, if there's someone that's just like, oh, shit, and like, you know, okay, great. You know, I, I think lots of things are shit. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's like, it's like a, you know, just trust your gut. Make it work for you. Always try and improve. And also as well, you know, if, if you're really proud of what you create, um, that's going to stand out to someone you're networking with. If you if you got someone that's just trying to be all cool, like barely barely say anything about what they're creating, then they're not going to be like very viable to work with. You know, when you meet a potential client, if they see that you are passionate and and love what you are creating for yourself. People want to work with that. People are like, I want to work with that person because they, they are proud of what they're doing and they love what they're doing. I always want to work with people like that. Um, might be different for other people, um, but just love what you do. Keep doing it. Keep sharing it. And uh, best of luck. And send it to me. I'd love to listen to it. I listen to lots of things. So I knew Grounds is a cool place. It's very distracting as well. So don't spend too long on there. Make sure you <laughs> dip into Newgrounds a little bit. And then get back straight back to work. Quality dreams.